have five people right now. Ten. All right. All right, guys. Let's uh, let's give the people a little bit of time to get back on here. I I don't know what happened. The um, I don't know if there's a problem with uh, with Zoom or or what, but it it cut out on us um, twice right in a row. So we've uh, we've quick switched and um, gone back to the to the regular setup with with uh, just the one camera. And we'll have to um, we'll have to make do with this for uh, for tonight, and then we'll have to figure out what uh, what's going on with it. I, I don't know what uh, what happened. It's uh, it's it's very very frustrating right now. So we'll give it another couple of minutes, and then we'll get started. What time is it? Seven twelve. Okay. All right. We'll give it to uh, we'll give it to quarter after, and then we'll get started. Back again, I right, back again for the third time or fourth, I don't or know. Or fourth, yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, Rick, what's up? Tech is great when it works right, yeah. Jack Garrett is watching. What do you say? I forgot to hit. Oh, yeah, they were doing, uh, Tucker CG was doing a podcast, and he, he they were doing it for like 10 or 15 minutes, and he didn't hit the record button, so all of the stuff that they were talking about, it didn't... Um, Make you feel a little better. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. But I just... It, that is something you can explain. This thing dropping out like this, it, it just doesn't make sense. It's so. quarantine internet. That's how you explain yeah, it. Yeah, right. Is it 7.15? Close enough. Okay. 62. All right, guys. How are you doing? Um, a little rough getting started here tonight. Um, it, if you just signed on for the oh fourth time now, it's uh, something happened with the Zoom and it kept cutting out, so... We went back to the regular setup with the camera, and um, for what we're doing tonight, it'll work. So we did, we we put a poll up uh, earlier in the week, and this is the first one that I've done for, I haven't been on for three weeks. We had uh, Braden on two weeks ago. Braden did his cardiac arrest, and it, it was it was a fantastic live. He, he had held over 500 people for almost two hours. And um, his impressions were great the week following. And, and I really didn't think anybody was going to be able to top that. And then Brittany came on last week. And during her hour, I think her highest um, live. 730. It, I, th I thought something. it was closer to 800. Um, anyhow, it was a bunch of people that she held through the live. So Braden and uh, Brittany knocked it out of the park with great live numbers. And I'm sitting here at 76 right now. So that's that's about right for me. So... Um, all right, so we put a poll up, well, and you talk a lot. They didn't talk; they tied. Yeah, I know, I know. It makes a big well, difference. <laughs> we we put a poll up and and asked what you guys wanted to see, and it was very very close between the the tube fly attachment and maintenance for the Norvice, and and maintenance edged out the tube fly by just a little bit. So um, I'm going to do the uh, the the maintenance one tonight, which is is going to be. Pretty much all show and tell. I don't have a, a pattern prepped um, for tonight. And then the next time that I'm on personally in two weeks, um, I'm going to do the uh, tube fly. We're going to tie some tube flies. So that's going to be at least my schedule for the next couple of weeks. Um, next week, uh, Brian Davenport is on. 
And then the week after, I'm not sure who's on after Brian. It might um, be Tony. It might be Tony. Yeah, it might be Tony. But we'll you just just watch the Facebook and we'll we'll put it all up there. So okay, a couple of things I want to get out of the way first. We just finished the Fly Lords giveaway, and um, Steve and I'm going to butcher you, his last name. You Chuck. You Chuck. Okay. From uh, up in New York, he tied a, a version of the Murder Hornet, which was really, really cool. Um, he won. He uh, he received a, uh, a brand new uh, brass hardware Norvice. Steve, it's being mailed out. It'll go out in tomorrow's shipment. Um, and then we just Saturday launched a uh, giveaway with Ed's Fly Shop. Uh, so you can, you can go on to uh, find Ed's Fly Shop on Instagram or Facebook. And we have posted the rules as well. We're giving away another um, brass hardware Norvice. This one's going to go for about three weeks, I think. Um, there's no, there's no tying involved. You, it, you it's just got to sign up, like and share, and if you, you got to put sign up and put your email in and everything. Okay, and then there you go. If you share it, if you follow us on Instagram, you get extra entries, and Facebook and extra entries, and uh, follow us on YouTube, you get extra entries and everything like that, and it all builds up, and there's a software that tracks everything, and then we do a uh, drawing at the end, and whoever wins, wins, but it's completely free. So, there you go. And I can tell you that this is, this may be the last giveaway for a while, so th this is your, this might be your last chance to, uh, to jump on a, uh, a brand new uh, vice for free. So, um, Norvice maintenance. Um, we get asked these questions a lot and we get asked the same questions a, a lot so what we decided to do is put this in a video and we're going to go over all of the different parts of the vice and, and how to maintain them and so forth and then we're going to put this up on um, up on the YouTube so that when people have questions about the um, the maintenance on the vice they can just refer to the video and then hopefully all their questions will be asked so um, <laughs> Karina Kerr is watching all right, so let's start. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and fire them out. I, I have seen a couple go through, and I don't know if it was on this one or one of the other three lives that um, <laughs> that we tried to do. Um, again, if we miss your question, just ask it again. Um, if we don't get to it during the live, I will go back and I will answer all the questions um, later. And you can always shoot me an email, tim at nor-vice.com, or shoot us a direct message through either Instagram or um, Facebook. Okay, so let's start. Let's start with the thread post. Okay, there is not a ton of maintenance that needs to be done to this particular part. Now, a lot of what we're going to talk about today centers around this, which is our O ring refurbish kit. And this is up on the website, it's under uh, spare parts. You have all of the O rings for the vise. Um, O-rings for your um, uh, bobbin and your spool arbor. The rubber grommet for the thread post is on. Um, you have a couple of the screws, these little set screws in the bottom of the uh, vise that always seem to get lost, and the garter spring for the uh, for the back of the jaws. So this, I, it, we have people, you know, all the time. Hey, my O-rings dry rotted this and so. So we just put it all together in a pack and uh, put it up on the website. If if your vice is more than a couple of years old, this would be a really, really solid investment. We'll go over a bunch of the pieces that are in here um, as we go through this. So on the thread post, on the newer models, and when I say newer, we're talking posts that are within the last, I'm going to say, 15 years or so. Whether it's the stainless one, like I have here, or the, the brass one, this thread post top literally just screws off. That's it. Okay. So a lot of guys, when they buy the light and they go to slide the light over, it may or may not slide over top of this brass or the stainless piece. You just unscrew it and your light bracket will slide over onto the, um, to the shaft of your thread post. Short of that, if you have the brass one, this may tarnish or patina over time. If that bothers you, the product that we use is called Brasso. Okay. Very, very easy product to use. Directions are on the back. Basically, you can take a hub that looks like this or any brass, the hub or the, the friction nut or the thread post that looks like that. 
and with a little elbow grease in very short order, you can have them looking like that. Okay, so if the tarnished brass is a uh, is a problem for you, the the brass of this product works really well. Um, if you don't want to polish brass, get the stainless vise, and you won't have to worry about it anymore. All right, so on your thread post, you've got the uh, the top, and then threaded into the front is the grommet that holds. We're on a 15 second delay. Okay. Come out of there. So there's the grommet that holds your um, hold your thread. There it is, right there. Okay, so this this is rubber. It will dry um, if you're in a very dry climate. Um, they, they can dry out and crack. Um, there is one in the O-ring refurbished kit. Very very simple. Unscrew. It's back here. Unscrew your your Phillips head screw. Take your old one off. Put your new one on. Screw it back in. Doesn't have to be super tight. Polished brass looks like it's not used enough. Yeah, exactly. And that's it. Thread post, that's all you have to do. Okay? Now, the next thing that we'll, uh, that we'll talk about are the jaws. And this is, this is probably the, one of the most um, overlooked um, maintenance items in, in the whole package. The, the jaws are not hard at all to take apart. This is a standard, um, standard inline jaw. Okay, very, very simple. All you do, take the adjustment screw out. Move the camera. A little bit, yeah. Okay. All right, how often should the O-rings be changed? Um, when they're dry and cracked, and, and it, it really, it depends on where you live. Customers that live in Arizona are changing their O-rings a lot. People that live in an area that's maybe not quite as dry, um, not as much. But I would say if it's more than a couple of years old, just go ahead and change them out. All right, so I took the, I took the, um, the adjustment screw out. Take the garter spring, slide it off the back. Now, this you, you want to keep this. You want to keep this um, pinched together because there's a spring underneath here. So very carefully lift this up. Take the spring out and take your cam out. And that's it. And all three of our jaws, the, the standard inline, the large saltwater, and the um, fine point jaw, they all assemble and disassemble the same way. Okay, now we, we have, we get questioned a lot of... Um, I'll put the hook in the jaw, I'll lock the cam, and then as I'm tying, the cam just on its own will pop open and the hook will fall out of the vise. Obviously, that's a problem. Generally, what has happened is either the jaw or the cam has a wear spot in it. And if you can see... Yeah, you can see that. Okay. there's You can see there's a divot right here, and I'll kind of cock it. And what that is from, that's from the cam repeatedly being clamped and unclamped, clamped and unclamped. And it's actually worn a, uh, a spot in the jaw. So if, if your cam is, is unclamping, you have either this going on or this is an exceptionally worn out cam. And you can actually see the score marks in here. Um, where where this cam has has been worn out two things here i can tell just by looking at this that this cam has never had any um is that the worn out one hold on i might have the wrong one no that's the worn out one there you go see the see the score marks in in the face of the cam and i can tell that for the basically the life of this um this cam th there was no um no lubricant at all put on here. Um, so if you have this scenario, which they will do over time, look, it's a mechanical part, okay? This is no different than the brakes on your car. You can only take two hardened pieces of metal and, and you know, scratch them across each other so many times before you start getting this. Um, 
if you have this or if you have a worn out cam or you're having this problem that the jaws are unlocking, send it back to me. I will resurface this section here. I will either fix or replace the cam and send them back. Okay. Um, but if you just want to maintain them to clean everything, what we use is good old fashioned WD 40. And then ah, here's a towel right here. And I'll just, I'll just spray some on the towel. Okay. And we'll just wipe everything down. Get all the, the nasty, nasty gunk and everything off. You can see kind of the, and th these are pretty clean. Sometimes they'll get really, really nasty. And then people get feathers and deer hair and oh everything yeah. down well, in them wait, and then they stick yeah. to it. You wait till we get to out. the bearings. And we'll just wipe all the, the pieces off. Now, as far as a lubricant, we like this white lithium grease. Now, you don't need to buy a tub that's this big. This is what we use when we're assembling parts. You can get a little um, small uh, like toothpaste tube size of this stuff. And, and if you're just maintaining your personal vice, that will last you forever. This this will last us about six months when, when we're assembling parts. So what I like to do, I'll just take my, my bodkin and I'll get a little bit on there. Set this over. And you want to do this whole, the, the inside portion of this cam. So the rounded portion. The rounded portion of the cam, which is right there. The flat portion you don't need to do. Just the rounded portion, or, or what I would call the front of the cam. We have a question. Can I send Jaws back to you from the UK? Uh, yeah, you can yeah. send Jaws back to us from anywhere. Yep, absolutely. Okay, and then you want to put a little bit on this flat section of the... Um, the, the non-movable jaw. So this would be the jaw that goes into the front hub. You want to put just a little bit on that flat section. And then you also... You can also use a Q-tip if you don't want to use your bodkin too. Yeah. So that's what I use when I'm putting all the stuff together. You also want to put a little bit in the threads of your adjustment screw. So this is just like any other preventative maintenance. Um, I don't know too many people that would go 20,000 miles without changing the oil in their car, you know, it's just something that you have to do. So these are all movable parts. They all have to be maintained. They all have to be cleaned. So this is something that you have to do. All right. So we've got everything all lubed up. Take your, your, uh, round screw, your, your jaw screw. There's, there's a hole in, in the jaw. It'll be the second one back. This one goes all the way through. This hole does not take the screw Set it in the hole, take your cam, take the flat part of the cam, set it on the jaw like so. So, uh, can I update my original uh, issue jaws to these cam actuated jaws? Yes, you can go on the website. We sell the new version of jaws. Uh, if you go under, it should be just on the website and then under jaw jaws, configurations. Yeah. Jaw configurations, mm -hmm. yep. and it'll be the standard jaw. And you guys have a stainless jaw system now. Uh, we've always had a stainless These jaw are always, system. They've always been stainless. These are stainless steel, and I'm going to get into that in a minute. Okay, so you got your you got your screw, or you got your spring in the hole. You've got your cam laying on the flat side of the jaw with the, the handles pointing in it. It's perpendicular. Now you take your, your movable jaw. It, it has a hole in it as well that goes over top of the screw. Pinch them together. Take your adjustment screw, thread it in, take your garter spring, pop it on the back, wipe off the excess, pop it back in your vise, and you're good to go. Okay, very simple. And again, all three jaw configurations um, come apart the same way. Now, the the cam, the cam, and the adjustment screw in the fine point jaw are the same as the cam and the adjustment screw in the standard inline jaw. They are they are literally the same part. Okay, the large saltwater jaw, although the the design is the same, the cam and the screw are different. The two parts are not interchangeable and. You don't really have to worry about getting them mixed up because they physically will not fit on the different pieces.
but they all come apart and go together the same way, and you, you um, clean and lubricate all three jaw systems the same way. Okay. So we had a question, do we offer a stainless jaw? The jaws have always been stainless, or at least they've always been stainless since I've been machining them for Norm. Um, now, just because they are stainless does not mean that they can't rust. And this is, this is a big misnomer that a lot of people are under the misconception that stainless steel won't rust. And there are many, many um, grades of stainless steel that, that won't rust. There are many grades of stainless steel that will rust. All of our jaws are hardened, okay? And so that means they are a little bit softer. The material is physically softer when we cut them. And then they go and they get um, sent to a, uh, to a heat treater. And they're basically baked in an oven. Now, not an oven like you have in your kitchen. A big industrial oven that gets up to several thousand degrees. And these are heated till they're a version of cherry red hot, and then they're cooled sequentially. And what that does, it changes the molecular structure of the metal, and it makes them harder. Okay, so we, um, I wanted to make sure that we brought our question um, back for the, you know, our trivia question for the for the um, for the live event. So I'm going to ask the question. We're not going to announce the winner on air because there's a delay of some of the uh, responses coming in. So at the end of the um, the, the live, we'll uh, go back and look, and whoever answers it first, um, we'll get you a, a Norvice t-shirt. So we've talked about stainless steel. We've talked about the fact that some stainlesses are and some stainlesses are not mag are, are not um, will some will rust and some won't rust. So the question is, what is the easiest way to tell if any metal will rust or not. There is a very, very easy way to do it. It takes literally two seconds and it takes this, longer to find the thing yeah, to do it than it does to if actually this do it. happens, it will rust. If this does not happen, it won't rust. And whoever knows the answer, send it in and we'll give the answer here shortly and we'll pick the first one um, a little bit later. Uh, can you repair the faces of the jaws damaged by hooks? Yes, depending on how bad they are. Um, what I'm going to tell you to do is send them to me and I will take a look at them if I can resurface them and I can still get the, the amount of travel out of it. There it is. That didn't well, take I've seen like seven coming yeah, okay. through. All right. So, All right. so it, it's a magnet. That's a magnet. eight. Yep. So, if, but if you're still typing magnet, you did not win the t-shirt. Yeah. There's like a line of people. Man, in front I of thought you. that would take a lot longer than everybody's. Yep. Exactly. So if you have a piece of metal if a magnet sticks to it, it'll rust. If a magnet does not stick to it, it won't rust. And the reason a magnet sticks to it is because it has iron in it. And that's, um, there's your trivia question for today. So we'll sort those out and um, um, we will um, send whomever a uh, was the first one a, a Norvice t-shirt. All right, so questions on the jaws. I, I, was, I was answering, can we resurface if they're damaged by hooks? The short answer is yes. Um, it depends on how bad they are. There are limits to how much material I can take off, you know, on the inner side of either of the two jaws and still get the clamping force that we need. Um, so what I'm going to tell you to do, if, you, if, if you're in question, send them to me and I'll take a look at them. Now, that leads me to another thing. We have on the website, it's on the homepage, on the footer, at the very bottom, it's one of the hyperlinks and it's um, returns and repairs, I think is what it's called. If you click on that link, it will take you to a page where it's one of those, kind of one of those survey things to fill Google out. form. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a Google form is what it is. And basically what that does is it, it makes sure that I have all of the information I need for me to complete the repair. And you would be surprised um, how many times I get things in the mail and it's literally... And, and we get these all the time. It'll be a, a bobbin um, frame with a broken tube. And it's just in the, in the envelope. There's no return address. There's no note. There's no nothing. I have no idea who it belongs to, what I'm supposed to do with it, where I need to send it to. So that um, Google Doc, it, there's required information in there. And it's basically your name, your telephone number, your um, address, um, what part it is, what the issue is. And when you click submit, you print that out, you put that in the package when you send it to me, 
it emails me a copy of the same paper and I print those all out and they're sitting over in the repair area um, in a stack. And then when your part comes in, I can match the two papers up and I know exactly what I have to fix, exactly where it's getting mailed back to, and it makes the repair process go a lot faster. Okay. And speaking of repairs, um, I don't care what you are mass producing. If you're manufacturing something, I don't care if it's a car, I don't care if it's a tool, if it's a, uh, a fly vice, what, if you're mass producing anything, there are going to be issues. Okay. You cannot get around it. Um, the real worth of a company, in my opinion, is how they take care of the issues when they crop up. I think our customer service is, is honestly second to none. Um, just spend some time on the Facebook page and you'll see the comments that we get. So this form makes it a lot easier for me to get these repairs in, get them turned, and get them back out to you, which is the ultimate goal. All right. I uh, had a guy ask, can you tie a fly real quick so I can see why I should get this vice compared to a regular rotary? Uh, uh, <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll give you a quick, a very quick... This was this was designed to be a um, a talking point tonight, but here I'll show you the one thing that we can do. Go grab me some um, uh, laser dough. All right, so the first thing that we can do is that right there where the hook spins on center. Okay, so it, when, whenever you're, um, you're wrapping anything uh, over the shank of the body, that gives you a huge benefit. And I'll knock this out real quick. Uh, so I'm tied on. Now if I want to lay a thread base down, instead of hand over hand wrapping my bobbin, I just spin the hook. Okay, now I'm going to half hitch. Go on my cradle, our automatic bobbin, it rewinds the slack itself. You don't have to use your thumb and forefinger to wind the slack up. And then one of the big benefits of spinning the vise versus your standard rotary tying. Okay, I got a little bit of dubbing here. I'm going to tease that out. I'm going to spin the vise, touch the dubbing to the thread. It's going to jump out of my fingers right up onto the thread. Pinch it here to tighten it up. Come off my cradle, come back on my hook. Imagine if this was a size, I don't know, 14 nymph that we were doing. There's your nice tapered abdomen of whatever bug you're, you're tying at the time. So that, that's, a, that's a real, real um, quick version of it. If you go to the website, there are about 60 different videos of tying different things with the vise. Our new YouTube channel has a bunch of tying on it too. Um, I don't mean to cut you off, but I got a bunch of stuff I want to get to. So hopefully that, um, that, that at least gets you pointed in the right direction. Okay. So we talked about the jaws. Do we have any questions on the jaws? As far as maintaining the jaws, this will make life so much easier. Yeah, right. All right. So the next thing that we'll talk about is the vice body. Okay. So here is the... Norvice body, it doesn't matter whether it's the stainless vise or the brass vise, the, the, the body pieces are all the same. Okay. Now we're going to talk about we're going to talk about a um, a little bit about the new versus the old. Okay, and you're going to hear me say the new vice body, the new vice body, the new vice body. So we haven't changed anything in the design. We have just tightened everything up. So one of the the knocks or one of the questions that we would get all the time is there would be a little bit of, of slop or movement up here in the front. And what we've been doing, and this is the beauty of being the ones who actually physically manufacture the parts, we have been systematically going through the parts in the vice head and we've been tightening things up and we've been taking a little bit out here and trimming a little bit there. And basically what it's done is it, it's taken everything and it's brought it down and it's a tighter unit. Okay. So if you have a question about whether you have a quote unquote new or an old, your old one is fine. It's not 
very, very different from, from what we're doing now. To look at it, you couldn't tell the difference. It's just tighter on the inside. Okay, so the way you can tell when I say new, if you look here, this, this would be the front of the vise that's facing the tire. You can see the logo in the middle. The old ones, on the back side, there's no logo. On the new ones, the logo is on both sides. So if you had a question when I say new vise or new vise head, it'll have the logo on both sides. Your old vise is fine. It has been functioning for years. It will continue to function for years. We're just taking everything and tightening up. Okay, now, when I say tightening it up, Hold on a sec. Oh, uh, does the spring on the jaws go, the inside of the jaws go bad? No. No, I haven't. No. Uh, if it does, we haven't seen yeah. one with that issue no. yet, so. It, th that spring does very little work, so. Okay. When I say that we're tightening up the inside of the vice head, this is a sheet of notebook paper, okay? This is eight and a half by 11. Now, if I turn it this way, and you're looking at this edge here. This is three thousandths of an inch thick. So if you were to take one inch and cut it into a thousand pieces, it, this is three of those. Okay. This Welcome to the world of a machinist guy because this is what I do every day. If I were to take this, the edge of this paper, and I were to split it 30 times, that's one tenth of a thousandth of an inch. That is the world that I live in every day. So when I say that we're tightening up the inside portions of this vice head, we're talking three, four, or five tenths of, an, of a thousandth of an inch. So that would be, if I were to cut this 30 times, we're talking five of those little slivers. That's what we're working to when, when we're manufacturing the parts to this vice. Um, in the long run, it's going to do better because it's going to give you a better product. It's going to be tighter. There's going to be less play in it. I am sure that we're going to run into issues when we're trying to match up new parts with vices that are 30-some years old. Um, when did you start tightening up? This year. The, the first batch of vices that we did this year. Um, if you're all, Yeah, the old ones don't have any logos on them at all. And then about 20, about 18 years ago, he started putting the logo on the one side. And then just this year in January, we started putting the logos on both sides. So I don't want to, I don't want it to sound like, oh my God, you got to go out and buy a new vice because you don't, but we're just working on ways to, to tighten this thing up. And when I, when I disassemble this, I'll show you what we're talking about. So to take them apart, really very, very easy. Take your friction nut, take it out. How old is your vice if it doesn't have any logos on it? If it doesn't have any logos on it, it's got to be, I'm going to say 20 years, 20, 22 years old, maybe. It's it's hard to, I, I don't have any hard documentation as to what generation vice, like when the dates were. I just know kind of by hearsay. And, you know, I bought mine in this year, and, and I can kind of tell there's, when I'm looking at one, two three, four, this will be Gen 5. Uh, so the guy that asked you to tie a fly is getting ready to order something and wants to know if there's any uh, promos or coupons right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's getting ready to hit the yeah. uh, send button. I can't blame him for asking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so right now, we don't have anything going on. Um, and and honestly, I don't. we don't have anything on the horizon coming up as far as promos. We did a bunch of them at the, when, when the shows got canceled because of COVID. Um, yeah, I, I, we, we don't have anything going on right now. I'm, I'm sorry. So I took the front hub off. Now, a lot of times when people are calling and they'll say, usually it'll be, will the tube fly conversion work on my vice? The first question I'll ask is send me a picture of the bottom of the hub. And do you have one or two set screws? If you have two set screws, it's pretty much compatible with everything we make. If you only have one set screw, it will work, but there's extra parts involved. So that's why I asked that question. Okay, so we got the front hub off. Uh, Kevin Griffin commented T-shirt. We should get <laughs> hook him up with a T-shirt. Oh, okay. You know what? Yeah. yeah it... All right. So back here, you, we've got this little tiny O-ring, and that's what keeps the that's what keeps the um, 
the, the hub, the back hub, from sliding all the way off the arbor. So you just kind of grab a hold of it, pull that little O-ring off. Now your back hub slides completely off. Now that exposes the shaft and the drive disc. This is one of the parts that we've been working on to tighten up. Now you'll notice in the drive disc, there's a set screw. It's the same size set screw as the one that's on your front hub. Loosen it up. Slide the drive disc off. Slide the arbor out of the front of the vise. That's it. You shouldn't have to take this thing apart any further than that. And really, there's not a whole lot to it. So you've got your vice body. There's a bearing in the front. There's a bearing in the back. We're going to talk about those in a second. Your center arbor. Your drive disc. And then your two hubs. Okay. So this, this is an unfinished vice head. This is one that we haven't, it's, it's finished machined. It's, it's, it's completed as far as the manufacturing process. We haven't sent it out to be anodized or have the logo engraved on it. Okay. So these, these diameters right here and right here. Let's see if you can see that there and there. Okay. When we bore those, remember I was talking about the, um, the, the, the notebook paper. These are bored to plus or minus in, in the machining world. We call it two tenths. Okay. So it's 0.625, which is five eighths of an inch plus or minus two tenths. So you can go those, that piece of notebook paper that's cut 30 times. You can go two of those little slivers high or two of those little slivers low, and it will still be considered a good part. Okay. This is very, very accurate. And the reason that we do this, this is one of the things that we've tightened up. This, this is our bearing that goes in there. And the way these work, the bearings, you've got an outer race, you've got the balls on the inside, and you've got an inner race. And this all has to be captured and contained with the right amount of pressure to make all of this stuff do what it's supposed to do. And some of the older ones, the bearings, you could... You could literally pop out of here with your hand. And the new ones, I can tell you this, you can't do that anymore. You, you are not going to be able to pop these bearings out. I can get them out. I have a tool that I designed that will go in and will extract these bearings from the body. But the normal person without the proper tooling is not going to get them out. Well, you can get them out, but you're going to destroy the vice head getting them out. Okay, That is done by design. These bearings have to be pressed in. This outer race has to have an amount of tension on it to capture it, to get it to do what it needs to do, okay? We have upgraded our bearings recently. Um, we're using a, um, a bearing. It is a USA manufactured bearing, which is very, very important to us. It is a stainless bearing, but it will rust, okay? But it is stainless steel. Honestly, these bearings, you're not spinning this vise long enough or fast enough to ever wear these out. Okay, now I'm not saying that they don't get worn out. Typically, if I have a, 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 um, a, a vice come back with a bearing that's worn out, it's not worn out. Typically, it is rusted and it has, it, it, it has rust spots on the inside and you get that kind of clunking when you spin it. And that is literally because the person didn't maintain it. Okay, these bearings should, especially the new ones, they're considerably more expensive than the ones that, that we were purchasing in the past. Um, Again, we have not raised the price on the vice, but we've raised the price of the manufacturing and some of the components that go in it, and that is to provide a better product for you guys. Um, so there's two of these. There's, there's one in the front, one in the back. They get pressed in, and then we assemble the rest of the vice. All right, so there's your vice head. There's your front bearing. There's your back bearing. Sven goes, have you seen me tie bully buggers? i got Mach 9 going on. Yeah. He um, might wear them out. The rest of you guys, maybe not still, so much. <laughs> he's still not going to wear them out. These things are designed, and this is, people they're, don't understand, they're designed to be spun at several thousand RPMs for long, long periods of time. You physically, I, you can hook a drill up to it, you can hook a sewing machine motor, you can do whatever. We you, do not recommend hooking a drill up to it. it. No, we actually tell you not to. Not because to, but 
you're not going to wear these out, especially the new ones. They, they, they cost almost triple what the old ones did. Oh, okay. And Sven, to answer your question, at the end, I can show the generation of the Norvice vices again. Oh, we did that a, a yeah. little while ago. We yeah. did it a few weeks yeah, ago. We'll, we'll do that. All right, so um, where was I at? Okay, so to clean your bearings, the, the product that I like, it's called Gum Scrubber. Now, I'm out of it, and we couldn't find it, but we have WD-40. It's an industrial strength degreaser. Um, you're looking, what I like about the gun scrubber, it, it, it's an aerosol. You, you get it at gun shops. It's obviously for cleaning guns, but it has like a super jet pressure on it, and it really gets in there and gets the, the dirt and the gunk out, and usually what happens with this, it'll be the front bearing, and it'll have thread, it'll have wax, dubbing, it'll have hair. wax, it'll have everything that you, and I don't know how it gets all the way up under this hub and into the bearing, but they do. All right, so you want to do this over a trash can. You definitely want to do it with um, with eye protection on because it'll splash. And I'm not going to do it here because I'm in my house, but just take and hold this and just spray right down inside the bearing and get it good. And, and until this stuff is running clear when it comes out and get all the gunk out of there, flip it over, do the other one. Again, spray it good. Don't be afraid to, uh, you're not going to hurt the anodizing or anything like that. Spray it I good. actually just got a question about hurting the anodizing. No, uh -uh. no, 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 no. You're not going to hurt it. Um, spray it good. Get all the gunk out of there. Get all the, the, the crap. I had one come in the other day and the guy, the guy goes, it's, it's not spinning like it used to. And I took it apart. And one of his kids had got a hold of it, and I swear they spun an entire spool of thread up in that front bearing. I've never seen anything like it before. Oh, Sven said, as an automotive uh, automotive wholesaler, check out Deep Creep by Seafoam. He uses it for all his guns because it cleans and it lubricates all okay. in one shot. So there you like, go. Deep all right, creep. I'm going to need a can of that. Yep. So that you can do. Um, now, once you get this, you get this sprayed out, and you get it good and clean. If you have access to an air compressor, that's a really good time to go over and just blow this out and get all the stuff out. You can also use this, the stuff that you use to clean your um, your keyboards. Um, this works. Air compressor is obviously better. The bearings are not going to come apart. Okay, so I had a guy ask a while ago if um, if I spray it with an air compressor or the bearing. No, they're not going to come apart. They're all captured. They're on the new ones. They're not coming out of this housing. Um, so you can, you can degrease them, you can blow them dry and get all the, the, the degreaser and all the, the junk out of it. Oh, awesome. The Sven's going to send us a can of that. And then light three in one oil. Okay. And that's all you need. Put a drop in right in the, the, the ball bearing section of the bearing in both of them. Just a drop. That's all you need. Just enough to keep them wet. Um, no WD-40 in here. WD-40, contrary to popular belief, is not a lubricant. It is more cleaner than it is a lubricant. If it's, you knew what WD-40 was made out of, you would understand it is not a... Um, it is water displacement, yeah, not... That's what it's <laughs> Water for. displacement experiment 40. So, yeah, that's, that's what that's it stands for. That's what it for. stands WD, for. WD, yep. All right, so <laughs> we've got our we've got our, our vice apart. We've hey, got our Corey, bearings. Watching. Hey, Corey, what's up? We've got our bearings cleaned. Now we're ready to dis to uh, reassemble. Now, any of these parts, when you take them apart, th this is a brand new vise. I literally just pulled it off of the um, off of the shelf. So these are all brand new and clean. They're going to be they're going to have some some gray or some black gummy stuff on here, especially in here as well. Um, take your your WD forty soaked rag, wipe them all off. Wipe your drive hub off. Maybe take a uh, take a Q tip. Get down inside the hole, get that all clean, and then we'll start reassembling. All right. So on your um, on your center arbor, you've got the knurled end. This is the end that you hold with your fingers and you spin. And then you've got on the front end, you've got a, um, a retaining ring. So you slide this through the front bearing. So I had the question on a new vice: Should we do this before using? No, on a no, new no, vice, no. you're We've done this go. all for you. We've done this all for you. So if if you go, let's say. Let's say you take a trip um, to the beach or something, and you're tying in, you know, on the balcony of the beach house, and you're in the salt air, and that. Then you want to take it apart and and clean it. Let's say it hasn't been done for six months. Take it apart and clean it. My my 
motto is when in doubt, clean it out. And if you're not sure that it needs cleaning, go ahead and clean it. Because you're not going to hurt it by cleaning. Yeah, you're not going to yeah. detriment yourself by cleaning it. No, you can't. You can't over clean it. So, um, all right. So we'll take our take our center arbor. We'll slide it in. Now, our drive disc. You'll see one end of the drive disc is flat. One end of the drive disc has a smaller diameter near the center. This is very important, okay? When you put the drive disc on, the smaller diameter goes against the bearing, okay? So when you put it on, it goes on this way, not this way. If you put it on this way, it will go together. The vise is not going to spin worth a damn, okay? This is part of the design. So when you put it on, make sure that the smaller diameter is facing the bearing. So how often should one do this? Depending on how much you you use the vise once a year, if you use it a lot, once every six months. Yeah, I, I would say, just to be safe, I would say every six months. The other thing that you don't want, you don't want the vise sitting for a long period of time in this state without spinning it. Because all of the, the lubrication and the bearings will, will flow down to the bottom end. And then if you do in an area where you have like a lot of humidity or, or, or something, the bearings will start to rust. Like I said, they are stainless, but they will still rust. So um, at very least, you want to just spin the vise every once in a while. Yeah, the guys um, in Arizona need to replace the O-rings. They're pretty good with everything else. Yeah. And, and here's the deal, guys. Don't stress about any of this. I mean, you're talking to the guy that, that makes the thing. There is nothing that you can do to this vice that I can't fix. Literally, um, short of tying I'm it on the bumper. i for a challenge accepting yeah. comment to pop up. Um, short of tying it on the bumper and dragging it behind your car, which I have seen one that that, that happened to. There is nothing that you can't do that I can't fix. So um, if you ever get stumped or you're having a problem with it, give me a call or send it back in. We'll fix it and we'll get it back out to you. All right. So you put your... Can I use a small ultrasonic part? Uh, cleaner on the parts yes absolutely. absolutely if you have that do it please yeah. i need one <laughs> yeah Th that's actually the best way to do it yeah uh david cargill said my almost 30 year old vice works like new after your refurb yeah he's he just uh david just sent his vice in like three weeks ago and i did some stuff to it cleaned it up i basically did this process to it resurfaced his jaws and he said it's like brand new and it's it's literally a 30 year old vice all right so we've got our, our small diameter we slide that on now, what I do, this is something that first-timers are going to have. It's, it's kind of a feel thing when you're assembling these. What happens here is this retaining ring pushes against the front of the front bearing. Turn it a little more. There. Okay, so this retaining ring right here pushes against the front of the front bearing. This diameter on the, the face of this drive disc pushes on the back of the rear um, bearing. So when you're putting these together, what I do is I take my thumb and I push on the front of the arbor and I take my forefinger and my middle finger and I push on the drive disc. So I'm, I'm pinching this together and this is where if you clamp down on this super, super hard and tighten that screw, you're going to have drag and the vise isn't going to spin. You also don't want it so loose that the you don't want this set up where you tighten this. If I get the right Allen wrench. You also don't want this where if you tighten this down and the whole arbor slides back and forth. You don't want that. Okay. So... And it, it's really a feel thing. And put it together, and if it feels right, fine. If it doesn't feel right, just take it apart and maybe not, not pinch quite as hard or pinch a little harder, depending on, on which way you went. But put your thumb here. Put your middle and your, and your um, uh, pointer finger on either side of the disc, and then pinch that together. Put a little tension on it. Not a lot. You're not, like, trying to choke this thing to death. Just put a little tension on it, and then take your Allen wrench. And tighten this screw. How much does it cost to get jaws resurfaced? Uh, just your, your shipping to and from. That's a service that we provide that's part of our warranty service. All right. So now I've got my center arbor back in. I've got my drive disc on. 
and the vise is spinning. Next step, nail. Here's our unfinished one. Everybody knows that the, that the vise locks in four positions, right? These are the four indents that are machined in the back of the, uh, of the vise that allow the vise to lock. And on your rear hub, if you look inside, there's a pin in there that engages each one of these slots that's machined in the back of this, um, this body. So when you put this together on your drive disc, there's, there's a slot. There's one slot on the disc. This pin that's in the back of the hub has to go through the slot and then engage one of the four indents in the back of the, um, of the vice body. So what you do is you slide this on and then you rotate it until the pin engages the slot in the drive hub. See how it slid? There's the drive hub. It won't, it won't go forward. Now you turn it until it engages. Then it will slide forward. Push it all the way up against the, the, um, the back of the vice body and then turn it. Come on, what are we doing here? You put it all backwards is what you're doing there. <laughs> no, I didn't. Turn, look at the slots on your right hand side. Your right hand side. Oh shit! I <laughs> and that's why you have to pay attention when that's you're putting why it I together. Pay I saw it as soon as you started to do it. I'm like, this is gonna be funny. Okay. <laughs> now that's the problem when we started putting the logo back, on back both in the sides. Day, yeah, when, when we put the logo on both sides, it, I had the logo facing me, and I'm thinking I'm good to go. So that's why it wouldn't engage. See the four slots? I had it the wrong way. So that was actually a teaching moment. I wanted to see if anybody would pick up on it. Which you didn't, including so you all you. failed. Including you. All right. <laughs> Slide the hub on. That was embarrassing. Slide the drive disc on. I know it was. <laughs> How do you pay for reassurance tipping and cost? Uh, I'll do it through PayPal. So I'll send you requests for funds through PayPal. Tighten it down. Now, let's try this again the right way. Engage the drive disc now. There you go. Now we engage the back of the vise. There it goes. You'll pay for that, Tyler. And like, I'm not the one that was putting it together. Okay. So now we've got a rear hub on. And then what I'll do, the hole that's in the rear hub, I will orient that at 12 o'clock. Put the front hub on. Tighten it down. And... Put your jaws in. And there you go. So, last thing to do is put the um, put the friction nut in. Take a little bit of this um, this white lithium grease. Put it on the O-ring. Just a, just a small film. You don't want grease spewing out everywhere. And then a little bit on the threads of the nylon um, nylon wash or nylon screw. And thread that down. And you're good to go. Okay, now that brings me to my next thing that somebody asked us to demo. We put up on the website a little bit ago a package of these two, and and they're they're really really hard to see. Instead of three in one oil, uh, how about silicone spray? Silicone spray is fine. Yep. Okay. See that little white set screw okay we put these up on the website a couple of a uh, couple of weeks ago and they've been selling like crazy what happens a couple of things over time as you slide this in and out a couple thousand times obviously there's there's going to be a little bit of wear and what happens is the hole in the in the back of the hub gets a little bit of wear to it and the hub becomes loose okay Two things happen. Some people, I don't have this problem. I know a lot of people that don't. I know a lot of people that do. When they're tying, and we call it, um, I think Brian calls it spaz hands, they, they accidentally knock the rear hub out of lockup. And it's easier when you have the turning handle in there to hit Yeah, it. and that, that's another reason. I don't use the turning handle. <coughs> Why I don't use the turning handle. <coughs> Hold on a second.
All right, there's the little there's the little brass turning handle. I personally don't use it. It comes with every vice that we sell. I take it out or, or I never install it. If you wanted to install it, it just threads in the back of this um, this hole here. Okay, and then you have your little handle that you can turn with your finger. I The reason I don't like it is because when I'm spinning, it always seems to get in the way, and I have bumped it and, and knocked the rear hub out of lockup. Okay, the other thing, let me take this out. The other thing that you'll see, especially with the, with the brass ones, as they get a little bit older and they start to wear out, when you spin it, and even on some of the new ones, you, I don't know if, you, if that comes through or not. You can kind of hear a clunking noise, like a clunk, clunk, clunk. And basically what that is, the hub is doing this. You can't see it, but it's just a byproduct of the moving pieces. It's okay. called stack tolerancing. Stack tolerancing, yep. Which is a machinist nightmare. So, take these little silicone screws, and somebody on Facebook actually asked if I would demo this. This threaded hole that's in this hub that we screw, it, it's originally in there for the, for the drive handle. It goes all the way through the hub, and what this screw is going to do is when I, tight, when I take it and tighten it down, and these don't have to be very tight at all, literally just two fingers on the Allen wrench, the tip of that screw is now touching this center shaft, okay? It doesn't affect the spin, but if you notice, it takes the clunk out of it, okay? And also, if you have a problem with knocking this thing in and out of lockup, you can adjust how tight this is, so I can make it a little tighter, Okay, it's nice and quiet when it spins, and I can almost set the, the amount of pressure or the amount of force that I want to use to, um, to engage and disengage the hub. Then you take the second one, once you get your, your tension set, you run your second one right down on top of the first one. That, that locks the first one in so that it can't move up or down, and then if you choose to, you can still put your turning handle in. I've got to modify the one screw a little bit, but you can still use your turning handle even with the, um, with the two screws in it. So that's a way to get kind of a, <clears throat> a custom tension, if you will, of the slide, the lock and unlock of your hub, and it also helps quiet it down a little bit. So all of the quote-unquote new vices, double logo vices, are going to have these screws installed in them already. Um, if, if it's something that you want to try, they're on the website. We're selling them for a dollar. So it's it's literally the cheapest that the e-commerce will allow me to put an item up for sale on the website. And it's not that I'm trying to make money on them. It's more so for the shipping. And um, It doesn't take us 10 minutes to process yeah. the shipping on every order. We just print the label just out. Just print the label the out and ship them out. So, so that's your, um, that's your, your nylon um, lock, lock nuts. I think that's about it, isn't I it? I got one more thing. What time is it? Uh... 809. 809. All right, guys. One more thing here, and then we're going to sign off. So if you have any questions, go ahead and start uh, firing away. Start firing away. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we, Terry, this is what you were asking about. Okay, yeah. The, this, this is what I said. If it's never happened to you, you obviously, if you don't know what it is, it's never happened. Uh, Sal, we do not do the laser engraving in-house. They're done by the people that do the anodizing. We yep. have them do the laser engraving. And the granite bases are sandblasted, but they're blasted by our supplier. So, mm -hmm. no, well, we don't do a bunch of custom stuff with that. I'm sorry, Well, the, um, the, the, I, I'm actually thinking about on the bases doing some custom stuff. Um, I got to talk with the manufacturers about what the price is going to be. Um, we've had loose discussions about it. It's really going to depend on what you want blasted on the base. You have to provide me with what's called a vector file. So it, it basically is a 2D computerized rendering of the logo or whatever it is that, that you want, um, that you want done. They get a stencil made and the stencils are vinyl and they go over top of the entire stone and then they, they sandblast in between the stencils, and that's how you get the, the logo and the words and all that kind of stuff. Is there any maintenance on the bobbins? I'm going to get the bobbins in a second. Yep, yep. All right, so this that we've talked about 
And the first time this happened to me, it was at a show. I had about 30 people in front of the booth and I was tying and my vice started doing this and I didn't know what the heck was going on. So here's, here's the scenario. Your vice is in lockup, so the rear hub's locked up, but the front will still turn. Now look, the rear hub's in lockup. Uh, Lee Barbie's watching. But the front still turns, okay? And like I said, the first time this happened to me at the show, I didn't know what it was. So I just tied with it like that, and I was like being real careful to not pull the front around. And then once the people walked away, I figured out what it is. What happens is, let me take this rear hub off. Uh, are the little screws in the rebuild kit? There's uh, four. No, of, the plastic, the nylon screws, are they in the rebuild They are not. Kit? No, no, they're, they're sold not. separately. If you go on that uh, spare parts page, you'll see the rebuild kits there. The bobbin tips are there. The friction nuts are up there. The thread posts, believe it or not, we sell a lot of standalone thread posts. A lot of people, people lose thread posts. They lose the thread posts. Yeah, it happens all the time. And the um, the nylon screws are on there as well. All right, so my my rear hub's in lockup. My front of the vise is still turning. What has happened is this screw on that drive disc has become loose. And if you'll see, I'll hold this. The pin that's in the rear hub goes through the drive disc. This is what drives it when you spin it. This is what drives the front when it's unlocked, but when it's locked up, everything is, is stationary. So this is loose, so I can hold this, but I can turn the front of the vise. Okay, all you got to do, very simple, all you have to do, loosen this up. It's hard when it's not anchored to the... Uh, <laughs> the table. Loosen this up. Okay. Again, remember that, that push-pull thing that I did when I was pinching it together? Tighten that back down, and you may even give it a little, turn your Allen wrench to the short side, give it a little oomph. Put your rear hub on, turn it so it engages the drive disc. Turn it so it engages the body. Put your, put your O-ring back on. Now, you have to clock the front, if you're, especially if you're using a turning handle, you got to clock the front and the rear hub. So I take the rear hub, orient it to the 90 degrees so the hole is right here. Take the front hub. Actually, let me loosen that first. Take the front hub off. Take the rear hub, orient it till it's 90 degrees. Take the front hub. Put it on so that all the screws are in line. Tighten it down. Vice spins. Put it in lockup. Front head doesn't turn. Simple as that. There's one screw that's loosened up. All right. So that's pretty much it for the vice. The vice head and the jaws on the bobbin. There is not a lot of um, maintenance that you need to do. The biggest challenge with the bobbins, when people say um, they're either not rewinding or the spring is, is weak or I'm having trouble with it, the first thing is they've got the thread on backwards, okay? They are directional. If you look at, at our bobbin clutches, you can see there's an arrow right there. Your thread has to be going in the same direction as the arrow. So... Okay, so there's, there's my thread spool. Okay, the thread is coming off the bottom of the bobbin. When I put the bobbin clutch in, you can see the arrow and the thread are going in the same direction. Now, this way it will, re it will rewind. If I put it in like this and the arrow is pointing this way and the thread's going that way, it will not rewind. It is physically impossible for this thing to rewind. So when you put one together, if it's not, especially if it's new, if it's not winding properly, just take your bobbin clutch out, flip it over, put it back in, then you're going the right way. All right. We already okay. have questions about the second step of bobbin, bobbin maintenance. What's that? How to clean the tube. I'm, I'm getting to it. Mm -hmm. All right. So 
bobbin, that's the first issue. The second issue, sometimes, especially if people load the spool completely, which I do, I do put a full um, spool of thread on it. When you when you have your bobbin hanging at the um, at the uh, hook, sometimes it will creep down a little bit. Just um, yeah, there's a good one. Just wrap your it. They're actually designed to have the thread wrapped around the leg of the bobbin. And if you have it set up like that, it'll hang there perfectly. It'll still retract. There's a uh, there's a video from like 1992 when Norm first did these, and he actually shows you how to wrap that around, or they're designed to be done that way. All right. Now, as far as the tube goes, the third thing, if a bobbin's not rewinding, especially if you tie with uh, wax thread, you'll get right where the thread goes into the bottom of the tube, you'll get a lot of wax buildup right here and it, it'll get to the point to where it's it's literally um, clogging the tube up and it makes it very hard for the spring clutch to pull the bobbin or to pull the thread back through it's like pulling um, pulling it through mud so you can take your bobbin frame you can soak it in um, rubbing alcohol isopropyl alcohol that will help dissolve the wax um, there is a micro pipe cleaner that you can get at like CVS or uh, Walgreens. Make sure you get the ones that don't have the little metal spines in them. It's it's basically, it looks like the chenille that we tie with, but it has a rigid core through the center of it. And you can push those through and that'll clean them out. Um, and then, you know, just use, use your bobbin like normal. As far as your threaders, this is what we recommend to thread your bobbin. It, it is a, um, it's a dental floss threader, so it's basically a monofilament loop. Again, you get them at CVS or Walgreens, back where the, uh, where the toothbrush and, and dental floss are. One pack is like four bucks, and there's enough in there to last you a lifetime. Do not ever use a metal bobbin threader with these ceramic tubes. Your metal bobbin threader, and I don't care if it's a high-end one, I don't care if it's a cheap one, you never put any metal down inside this tube. What will happen... The metal will score the inside of the ceramic, and you might as well have a razor blade inside there, and you'll be tying, and it'll cut thread, and you'll re-thread it, it'll tie, it'll cut thread. So always use a mono bobbin threader, or you can push the thread up in the back of the uh, tube and then just, just suck on it like a straw and, and suck it through the end. All right, so that's, that's about it. Um, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and fire away, um, and let us know what you think. I want to take a drink because I've been talking for a long time. You got it out of your system this week, so next time you just tie the whole time. Yeah, next time when I'm on, which is going to be two weeks from now, um, we'll do the tube fly, and I'll, I'll tie up a couple of two or three tube flies, which is uh, which is cool. You guys will you guys will like that. So all right, I'm not seeing any questions. No coming questions. Through, so all right, we'll, we'll we had a lot around. throughout. So yeah. we'll stick around for another couple minutes, and then we're going to sign off. Yeah, I got a surprise for you for when it's over with, too. A surprise for me for uh -huh. when it's over with? Okay. Great stuff as usual. Thank you. Hey, Stephen. What time is it over there? You're up awful late. Do Bob and Springs need oil? No, they do not. It's a sealed system. Um, they, um, they, 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 the, the clutch, the actual, this piece here, uh, should we... be maintenance-free other than Maybe putting a little lithium grease on the O-ring so that it slides in and off of the uh, of the spools. That, that's it. So uh, we do not have an Australian distributor, so you'd have to order directly from us. One of the bobbin holders legs has become loose. How do you suggest I remedy? Uh, I would send that to us if it's one of the send it to ones. us. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll fix it up for you. Um, can I purchase just a bobbin frame? If I've used a bodkin to clean it, it if it's no, not just send cutting, it back and I can replace the tube. Well, I, if it's not cutting the thread, yeah, you're good. If it's cutting the thread, it yeah. It, Patrick said he got on late, but he hey, what's to, up, Patrick? Yeah, this time next week we'll this be time, dinner yeah, with next you. Week so we'll be dinner. So right. <laughs> How long do bobbins last? Um, we have some that are thirty years old. Uh, the Norvis magnifier light. It he's had it for ten years in the connector to the thread post broke is there a fix or do you have to buy a new one if it's the plastic one if the piece that comes out of the bottom of the light is plastic that believe it or not that was actually two lights ago 
we went away from that light for that specific reason. Those connectors break all the time. We went to a second one that was cast aluminum. We just um, offered this new one that is, it's all metal construction. It's much more compact head. It's got two settings on the light, the brightness settings. It's an LED and it has a USB plug, so it'll plug into a portable battery. So this is a much, much better light. But to answer your question, the one, if it's plastic and it's broken, now there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, do Bob and O-rings come in the kit? Yes, they yes, do. Yes, they do. You get four of them. And it's the same O-ring that goes on your spooling arbor. So the Bob and O-ring and the spooling arbor O-ring are the same thing. So uh, the guy said it's a bit hard to send from Australia. We ship to Australia and New Zealand at least every week. Yeah, um, yeah, every week we, we send something. We had yeah. a guy order a granite base and have it shipped to yeah. Australia. That was and, and I mean, I understand the guys in Australia and, and the guys in the UK and stuff. It, it It is tough to send stuff back. Um, I, I get it, but I can't fix something if I don't have it here in my hands. Uh, so. Thank you. Ready to place my order. Do I order direct from Norvice or is there a dealer in Minnesota? I do not believe we have a Minnesota dealer. We don't dealer, have a dealer so in Minnesota. No, so head go, right to the website. You can go right on the website and order everything from there. Two How of, much lumen for the light? Uh, 1400 Uh, Two of my old bobbins only travel around 10 inches where the new one travels 14. Why is this? Uh, how old are the bobbins? They, it, I mean, yeah. if they're some of the original 15 years old, they could be slowly wearing, and that's why you're not getting as much retraction. Yeah. Like you said earlier, anything mechanical will wear over the time. And if it's one that wear. has this type of frame on it, I don't know that he had them designed to go as far as the new ones. Um, and again, this these were long before my time, so... Uh, uh, the spring on one guy's bobbin is weak. Can it be replaced? It's 25 years old. Uh, I'll let you handle that one. Send it to me. Let me take a look at it, and we'll uh, if if it's if there's something I can do to fix it, um, we'll fix it. If not, then I'll I'll give you a shout, and we'll talk about what the uh, what the next course of action is. Just remember, for anyone sending anything in on the front page of the website, you go down to the footer. There's a maintenance form. You have to fill that form out and include it with your order that you're sending back in to have us work on. That way, we actually know who it ships to, as opposed to. I don't remember talking to this guy and not knowing well, where something goes. The the form literally takes less than five minutes to fill out. It takes all the guesswork out of the parts and pieces coming in, and it allows me to turn them faster and get them back to you, which is the ultimate goal. So please take the five minutes, fill the form out. All of the instructions are on there, where to send it to, how to send it, and all that kind of stuff. It just makes things a lot easier. All right, I think that's about it. All right, it. I think we're done. All right, guys, thank you very much. We'll, uh, we'll see you next week.